let's let's let, let's um, um, you know I, I like very much punctuality so uh, but let's say everyone is entering so let's give us um, this type of a five minutes uh, tolerance <laughs> and thank you so much guys who put the video as well uh, it uh, shows shows um, the respect for 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 all of us that we can can be uh, all included uh, is part as well of the digital diplomacy uh, that we, we don't hide out <laughs> we put ourselves on ah and he's here <laughs> nice hello hi Ravi how are you <laughs> I'm good nice to see you again as well <laughs> nice to see you after such nice a long time nice such you. a long time exactly wow yeah. it's, all, all it's wonderful to here. see you again yeah it's wonderful it's wonderful yes I'm so happy I'm happy too to see you I'm just trusting here everyone mm -hmm. So, okay, Marcus, what do you think? Shall we start? Did you, did you admit everyone? Yes, I think we can start now. Okay. <clears throat> Perfect. Okay, so I, I would like to, to welcome actually to this uh, crash course, to this uh, master class, uh, how we call it in international commercial diplomacy. Uh, it's very uh, wonderful to be uh, active um, uh. here as the founder of the ISPD. <laughs> so I'm, I'm really, uh, you know, it's, uh, we're giving the floor to all of our experts and, uh, and uh, it's my pleasure as well to, to, be, um, to be here with you, to see so many of my, my famous faces, my students, my participants that we saw live in Brussels uh, and in the headquarters of ISPD that we have seen in so many other countries uh, like Trinidad, Tobago, US, and uh, you know, so, so many of, of you that are taking these hours to, to be here with me. Um, we're going to cover a couple of things today. Uh, first, I would like just for the ones that, that uh, I don't yeah. know yet, uh, and, for the, and for the ones that I would like to ask you for now to, uh, to just uh, establish a little bit the protocol. If we don't start with that now, it would be not, uh, it would not be an introduction. I would like to ask everyone to be uh, now muted uh, because of the, um, the background noises. Um, of course, we, we have um, space for the questions. Uh, Marcos uh, he's, uh, is here moderating, uh, he's part of uh, the ISPD team and is here moderating um, uh, the questions that are going to be put uh, by yourselves in the chat because there's a lot of questions sometimes that are repeated and is a big group. So we try to, to compile the questions so I can as well address them. Um, we try to compile and, and address them to, to the specific cases that you have. Um, I would like as well then to, to um, after five minutes, 10 minutes of introduction, I would like as well to share some questions that we have already received uh, via, via email, uh, by our participants, uh, the, the topics where we should apply international commercial diplomacy. Of course, this is just um, a master class. Uh, so, Marcos, uh, I would request as well if you see that the noise comes from... Just to avoid, so uh, so yeah. sometimes you don't mute uh, the people, so try not to uh, mute. Marcus, don't don't mute me. <laughs> you can mute the others. <laughs> so, okay, thank you so much. Uh, you know, uh, for the ones that do do not know me, I tend to be a little bit funny. <laughs> So, and, uh, so I, I try to, to, because this is not a kind of a, it's a, it's a very serious topic, but we can enjoy it, you know, it's, so please, any questions you may have, you'd like to me to address in this, in this hour we're going to, to spend together, please uh, just put in the chat and Marcus will moderate. Uh, I would like to just to share with you now some of the main questions that were already sent before I start that I will address them now. 
uh, along this uh, small presentation. So um, it, it's about stakeholders management, especially uh, of, uh, of the main uh, reason actually of the existence of commercial diplomacy. We're going to define all these wording uh, that are conflicting wording, what is corporate diplomacy, what is the co commercial diplomacy, economical diplomacy, and how all this, uh, if it's synonymous, it's not. So this we're going to answer. Uh, how we can promote through through the um, diplomacy as well, the rules and procedures that we call protocol between the different companies and professionals. As well, we're going to cover a little bit the digital diplomacy, how misunderstandings uh, are, are being um, uh, solved, uh, how uh, non-misunderstandings are not being solved. And as well, uh, um, we're going to, to cover a little bit how those diplomacy, how to include diplomacy in um, in the companies can actually improve the relationships, relationships virtually. And this course is actually virtual. Like I said, we at least uh, I really see 25% of the people we've met in Brussels. You were, uh, like I said, participants, members of the ISPD. This is, uh, so you are there with, with me. And But the other ones, no, we were met online with, uh, in, and after this pandemic. And um, of course, we have to cover how um, the um, commercial diplomacy of companies, but as well of governments has been addressed this last year and how uh, can be foreseen for the future. And as well, another important cover topic uh, that are in, in different, um, in different area of the questions that were sent to, to us is about how the international diplomacy can confront as well the cl climate changes and all the more uh, biological uh, disasters. We had COVID, we had uh, climate change and other types of uh, hot topics um, uh, in the world. So this is a, a little bit the questions that um, compiled that I have received before. Uh, if this as well covers the areas that you'd like to know uh, perfect, I will cover them. Uh, if there's something extra that you'd like to, to, to have my views on that, uh, please just put in the chat like our sharing and um, and uh, Marcus will will compile them and uh, we will going to address them a little bit more in time. Okay, so for the ones that uh, don't know me, I mean, Espiris, again, I was uh, I'm the acting president of the Innovation in Diplomacy Network. Um, I was the founder actually of both of the Protocol and Diplomacy Institute based in Brussels um, and as well the network. So I was that founder. Uh, now um, I'm acting president. The history of, of commercial diplomacy is, uh, is main linked to everything that is the vision of the ISPD. When we've uh, created ISPD until the day of today, and this is a bit of the evolution of, of the ISPD, it was focused on three main pillars. Uh, it was, of course, the protocol, the rules and procedures, because without rules and procedures, at the end of the day, we cannot implement um, any type of communication and relationship because we don't understand the rules of the other parties. And this is linked to the second pillar of the ISPD, um, that is the cross-cultural relations. So, of course, we need to understand the others, the different cultures. We, we, we have still a big world uh, that every time people try to convince me that it's becoming smaller, but actually I don't think so. I think it's becoming bigger. Uh, because we became in this uh, COVID, we became a little bit more nationalistic, a bit more radical. We became um, a little bit uh, less tolerant. Um, it's my opinion. Um, uh, and actually, uh, people start to look more internally than externally. So uh, we, we tend to, there's a tendency now to change. So uh, it's more than ever the importance of cross-cultural communication uh, and, and, and business. And that's the understanding of the transparency as well what people um, um, reduce in their minds, what is their perception. And I would like to quote as well, uh, Thomas Slack, who here, he always says that we always think that um, that is uh, uh, the other ones. So we always think that our views is the correct one. Uh, so we all think that is our views, the correct one, and the other ones are just the other views. Uh, but at the end of the day, no, it's just a question of perception. So this is the main two pillars pillar number two of the SPD you have here behind this book that uh, myself and Thomas we wrote together called soft diplomacy that focus 100% in that relationship modeling the international relations uh, in different areas from the cross-cultural area to the to the intelligence of, of the relationships and then the three main uh, three main pillar of the SPD and we create an evolution in the last five years 
uh, was focused in international business that we call it corporate diplomacy, commercial diplomacy, and there's a bit about this third pillar that I'm going to focus today. So um, myself, as you know, I was a head of a cabinet of the vice president of the European Parliament, a big part of my life. Then I lived in different countries as well, working in Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, but as well in international businesses. So uh, it's the, um, it is the ability of, of do this breach uh, that, uh, that the theories as well that I will present as well to you today that many of you already know because you know me, uh, but how they can create as well an evolution. And uh, that evolution happens uh, a lot now in this COVID and it's why we call this post pandemic era, um, which is quite important uh, because the, the world really changed and uh, the views we're going to discuss as well um, is, is how it changed. Uh, it's going to, to rechange back. Uh, we're going to be all normal again and uh, see each other all again, for sure. Uh, but there's things that will remain in this virtual space, in this digital diplomacy. Um, so it's uh, a bit about that that I would like as well to, to discuss. Um, currently, today, I'm, I'm, I'm in the Sultanate of Oman. Um, I, I made the, um, this home of the Sultanate of Oman to us and as well one of our um, offices here because as you know uh, ISPD were in a long partnership uh, with His Majesty uh, Sultan Kavuz D1 Royal Protocol for many years until um, of course His Majesty passed away uh, and we maintain of course our activities and our, our uh, partnership with the country until the day of today. Um, it is uh, a sure place uh, that international influence. Excuse me, Marcus. Okay. Sorry, so, sorry. Uh, and I thought you were asking something. So, uh, so actually, uh, we I'm still here. Um, for now, we we maintain, of course, our activity and headquarter in Brussels. So you are always welcome to come uh, to see us and to to be in contact with us. Uh, so I would like now to 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 jump uh, straight to uh, to the to the the main um, the main area. Um, that I would like to, that everyone knows these slides uh, this, uh, of myself, but because I like first to understand the being before the doing. It's like my reasoning. We have to reflect. Okay, so when you look at that, we always take a decision, always we take a decision at the end of a process, a mental process. And how we will link that uh, with, uh, with a commercial diplomacy, how we will link it. It's always linked to a declination. And this is a strategic point. The strategists like us present in this, in this, uh, in this meeting today, uh, in this uh, masterclass, we think backwards. Because um, when we start to think in a more um, deductive way um, or inductive way as well, uh, it depends on our minds. Uh, people like more engineering uh, types or more economical type like myself, or uh, we are more in, inductive. And the majority of the people in communication, they are more deductive, okay? In, in the majority. And it's uh, always people that are a bit mixed. So when we do that, we have to understand in front of us if the person is more deductive or inductive. And myself, I make mistakes every day. But the difference is that I mitigate the risks by risking them, okay? Um, because there's, there's really in the world, uh, our possibilities um, must be always entering out of the comfort zone. The, the people that are in the comfort zone, naturally, they cannot do cor uh, corporate diplomacy. They cannot use commercial diplomacy as a tool. Why? Uh, because commercial diplomacy, of course, is as well a set of rules like the protocol, like the cross-cultural, but uh, the, the mitigation of the, the commercial diplomacy, of the risk of the commercial diplomacy is as well based on the risk. We can mitigate, but we don't have certainties. This is called business. So uh, what we can do is to use that pillar of the diplomacy to mitigate the risk of the commercial parts that we are going to, to discuss now. So how we do that? We decline in our brains. We want a decision. We want to take a decision. And when we are more deductive, what happens is that we always go from the, a culture point of view. We cannot really change that. We can adapt 
and it's based on the experience. For example, if I have lived already in Sultanate of Oman, in Brussels, in Lisbon, in Madrid, in East Timor, all over the world, so there's, there's a, another set of culture values that I was exposed to in my business approach. So of course, I cannot be the same person that I was when I started my career that came just from one corporate culture. However, we all have a corporate culture, even if it is a mixed corporate culture, like the one I'm, I'm describing, already a mixed corp corporate culture. So when that happens, where we, uh, where we make the decision is not at the end. We always make the decision in the middle, in the negotiation. We actually see the type of negotiators that we have in front of, of us, if they are a bit more hard diplomats, if they are more uh, hard negotiators, if they are more lose, win, win, lose. Or if they are more soft, they are more into understanding, more against the conflict. Uh, so it's there in the negotiation where we see, and you can, in the third pillar actually of the ISPD, you can, you can uh, if you would like to assist some of our courses, you are going to see actually uh, a pillar just about the conflict resolution. So that means that the negotiation happens when uh, we are pre-conflict. When we are in conflict, usually um, we have to get out of the mode of conflict to be able to negotiate. Um, however, this is where we take the decision. When we see in front of us if we can or not advance to the decision, the strategic decision that we would like to, to proceed. So this is the, the stakeholders management. This is already part of the stakeholders management. Who is in front of us? Who is the negotiator? Who is together with us? To whom we are trying to pass our, our uh, image? To whom we are trying to pass um, uh, our product? To whom we would like to try to convince? To whom we try to protect? Because actually in, in a business culture, we are always trying to do two things. We are, like, we are trying to grow, and we are trying to protect. The, it's a bit like the football. I'm not kidding. Uh, it's a game, uh, the business game. The, the business people that are too protective, they lose. They lose um, a lot uh, because they don't, they mitigate only the risk. So uh, the, the loss can be bigger. The ones that are too risky, as well, they lose. Uh, is more a gambling point of view than actually a sustainable business. But it's important to know because in the table of negotiation, we have every, every type. We have gamblers, <laughs> we have the protectives, we have um, the ones that come with a very strict corporate culture that have to follow, it must is a SOP. Uh, we have all types of people around us. So the most important thing that I always say, and I, I, I now I would like to dedicate that for Lisa Ghani because she was always listening to me to say that nonstop. We need to understand the being before doing. Because if we don't understand the being, who is in front of us, what is happening is that we are always in the doing. Uh, and the doing is where we, we can just provoke um, uh, the misunderstandings and, and actually that uh, the corporate culture is, um, is, is, is going to be segregated actually instead of in a common ground. So I always say for us to be successful uh, in all our, our ventures is we have, we must create a common ground. We must find what is the common ground and how we found that common ground is by seeing what are the limits of all the stakeholders around us. And this is already answered the questions that are put on the, on the top of the table. How can we, how can diplomacy can put that? Is actually that, is finding, is the methodology, is a way that we find a common ground where everyone can accept. And it's very difficult, of course, because we cannot, not everyone is going to be happy. We always have, we cannot have always our, our view, cannot be just one. Um, otherwise, it's not a common ground, it's just a ground. <laughs> it's a ground that is separated, okay? So um, I've done a, a theory, a model you know, that I will share with you that is based on a cause that the cause is this matrix that we are have in front of, of, of you now called the global factor. Why we need commercial diplomacy? 
what is commercial diplomacy? I'm going to define it after, but I would like to know why commercial diplomacy is here. Why is international? Why is a must for a department of a, uh, of a modern multinational? Why is a must for a modern government? Why is a must for a modern embassy? Why is a must that marriage the three pillars? So it's a, it's a three pillar man, ma, marriage. It's not enough only the protocol that comes from the States. Not anymore. This is old already. It's not anymore. So it's very good rules and procedures because they are dictated by our, our nations. They are defined by our nations and defines as well our nations. They maintain their importance. But then pillar two again, cross culture cross-culture, soft diplomacy to manage those stakeholders that come from all over the world. And then pillar three makes things happen in business, makes things happen in any venture that we, we are in. So without these three pillars, we, are, we don't have a matrix. And why the matrix was created? Because we don't work only with Portuguese people. We don't work only with Brazilian people. We don't work only with American people. And even American people, many American people we have from, a, from a, a Chicago and we go for Atlanta and then we go for Connecticut, we go to New York and then we go to Australia and we go to Darwin, North Australia, Melbourne, South Australia. So, I mean, we are working every day in our businesses online in more than ever with a, a, a culturally diverse workforce. We have employees from different places. We have employers from different places. We are in the majority and actually was one of the prime ministers of Portugal that then he was uh, actually, um, a com it was the president of the European Commission, Mr. Durão Barroso. He always said something very important. Actually conflict is provoked first because of style, not really because of, uh, of concept. So sometimes he brought um, purple ties and he said, today I'm a conservative person and I bring a purple tie just to see the opinions. So, so at the end of the day, it's the style that provokes more the conflict. What is our perception and our assumption about who's in front of us, about the corporate culture of the people in front of us. So that means that provokes a bigger danger to say and to do the wrong thing. We never want to offend, never. We don't want to offend anyone on purpose, unless we are mean people. But in general, or in business, in, in, in the settings uh, of the international, the interaction, uh, we never want to offend anyone. So this is, but, but the danger is there because someone understands something different. Um, and I always receive, for example, uh, WhatsApps. And now in the business is the, in the, the modern world, we, we do business in WhatsApp. WhatsApp is the most, difficult tool to work because they create huge amount of uh, misunderstandings. However, it's very fast. We all agree on that. It's a very fast tool to make our business pass across. So we have to be double diplomatic. If it's necessary, we need to write, we need to leave some audios. We, we need to reinforce our ideas in different ways uh, because the, the people do not listen the same. And actually we, we seldom listen. Uh, even me, I'm a bad listener. I, I, I'm a, something I work every day in my listening skills. We have to work that every day. And listening skills is not just to listen, to step. Now I'm listening to you. Or you are listening to me. No, it's really to understand what that means for the other person. And another part of the matrix uh, is that we are augmenting the external stakeholders. What means ex external stakeholders? For example, now I see here a friend of mine as well, that I have businesses with. Imagine, let's do some gold business. In the gold business, what do you do? We do, we have a pillar that we have, uh, you know, a seller of the gold. Then we have the buyer of the gold. Then we have the financial trade partner of the gold. Then we have the bank from the buyer. Then we have the bank from the seller. Then we have as well another uh, compliance that we have to do, that is the government of, of a place that received the gold. Then we have our, the government of, uh, that sends the gold. Then we have, you know, so the augmentations in one deal of the external stakeholders that is so huge, is so big. Then how can we do a compliance at the same time maintaining everyone in trust? Because this is the, all about it, it's the global factor. How can we maintain the trust globally? Because we all distrust each other. 
This is what happened the last year. We don't trust anything. We lost the trust. Actually, I even heard that last week. We are losing the trust just because the processes are in constant growth of interactions. That is the fourth part there of this matrix. So it's constant growth of international interactions. We are always constant and now zooms. So I cannot express myself. I'm trying to <laughs> use my hands. I'm trying to be myself 100% uh, without adapting. Why? Because this, this is the moment, a little bit more monologue, where I can be myself. Why? Because I have people from all over the cultures in front of me. I'm not trying to adapt to anyone. I'm not trying to understand anyone at this moment. I'm trying to pass just um, a vision, an opinion, a masterclass, an experience from what I've been living the last 25 years of career. You know, I'm not a singer, but almost I, I'm not so young anymore. <laughs> I have a long, a long career already. Um, so this is what happened. So what, what, what we can do for, for all of that? How can we respond to this global factor? What is, is again, these three pillars is the pillar, of course, to understand the protocols, to understand the rules and procedures, to understand the processes, pillar one, that is more, less flexible, but we, we try to be flexible as much as we can. We try then to understand as well, the pillar two, that is that soft diplomacy, that cross-cultural intelligence behind everything that we do. And then we have the third pillar that is the focus of the corporate diplomacy, the international business. Um, and when we bring all this together, creates a response, creates a response. And I'm going to show you all, it just, uh, the, the ones that know me, they know my model. So they know the model, they know the book, they know all of the things. So uh, that is this. This is what is happening to us. We became, our organization became the center, okay? Uh, and from the center, we communicate, we um, react, we act, we uh, create, we move, we go for different uh, places in the world. So what, what that means, means in front you have the organization. So imagine we are centralized. We, we think about us. And this is a reality. Um, we, think we don't decline anymore from the others. We decline from our perspective. So we became more inductive. Uh, we just, uh, the change of the world became, make us a little bit more inductive, but more conscious about the matrix of the global factor. So for one side, is again, the, the risk and the protection. From one side, we are more protective of our organization, our nation, where we come from. But from another side, we, we risk more because we know that we cannot have same supplier, we cannot have same worker, we cannot have um, same employer, same partner from the same country, same village from the same place. So we understood that to be competitive, we have as well to, um, to be global. However, the, the word globalization is as well changing. So we are changing for um, a very specific nation-based uh, organization. We are protective, for sure. We are more protective, but at the same time, we, we try not to disconnect from the pillars that, uh, that make us uh, completely open and to put us in the poop position in the last 10 years that we could travel freely. We could go wherever we want. We can make business wherever we wanted. We can be in Africa and tomorrow be in India and, and tonight already booking a flight to go to, go to Colombia. So, so it comes from the organization in the center. And this never change. But the, the perspective of the future must change, change with us. Uh, we became really more digital. So from the organization, what we do, we have for one side to talk with our clients every day, but in a different format, in the different communication staff, in a different pillars, in a different form, and our competitors, our suppliers, our staff, our partners. So the, the part that are more internal and external to the life of the organization itself, is the organization itself. So in the past, we sit on the, the clients face to face. Nobody ever used Zoom or uh, that this, uh, this tool 
or another tool called, uh, I don't know, Cisco or another tool called uh, Skype or there's so many tools now, uh, like now. So now this is considered face-to-face. -face. It's like I'm seated now in your homes. This is the same now, before it was not. And it's still the same. This is my question, it's still the same? Which is my questions to you, this is still the same? We still, we always still need the touch of the human beings. I have an answer. <laughs> But this is the question for you. I am still the same. You can ask me those questions. I can, can I will going to be back or is going to be parallel worlds? Are we going to be crossing worlds? And then for another side, we still have to maintain the philosophy of the regulator. So we still have to work with the governments. We cannot escape the governments. We are we are not super governments, uh, our organizations. So we still have to 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 report to our shareholders of our companies, to our board of directors, we still have. And we still, this is the whole life of our central point of our organization, but we are included in other nationalities, in other countries and our companies. So the macro level became bigger. Uh, that's why I say the world did not become smaller, the world became bigger. For example, and uh, the types of communication and the expectations of the corporate culture are extremely difficult to manage nowadays. That everyone, for example, it's just an example of the WhatsApp, that the people do business by WhatsApp and a very difficult is to write a formal email. It's like disappeared for a year. A formal email said, dear sir and madam, please find enclosed um, the documents or the contract that I have uh, sent to you as per request. Nobody does that and say, I will send you WhatsApp, is enough. Is it enough? Not for everyone, not for all the culture. So this old ball that is in front of you, this concept is a corporate diplomacy concept. So a lot of people ask, ah, but all these words, and I want to define them now. So what is a corporate diplomacy? What is economical diplomacy? What is commercial diplomacy? At the end of the day, um, uh, now I'm laughing again because uh, I always say I have a triangular model that, uh, as well. But at the end of the day, because we have uh, like a triangle, you know, we, we communicate in points, the private sector, the public sector, and us, the people, you know. So this is, this is the world, uh, is, a, is a model, this is a world. And, uh, and what happens in, in this world is that economical diplomacy was more defined for embassies, you know, because in the past, the Department of Economical Diplomacy of a Minister of Foreign Affairs, for example, uh, was not so relevant, it was, it was important, it was always something that was there, we always wanted to show our country's uh, capacity of supply or production, um, but was not so relevant as today, for two reasons. So economical diplomacy, two reasons, that defines very, very much. At the time, we had a, a true division uh, between what was the private and the public. So we were not doing national branding so much. Yes, for tourism, for a, see our nice country. Now, the country must support the companies to sell. This is a, but it's not just with funds and so and you know uh, subsidies and all these types of things. It's actually no. It's so like you. I always say that when you think about Germany, what do you think? You think about quality cars you know, Volkswagen, Audi, Porsche, or we all think about the brand and that was what you associate Germany. So Germany is a, 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 is a country that provides technology, that provides structure, that provides quality, okay? So it's in the back of your mind and not all the countries have that. Our countries have very bad reputations. So they have very bad reputations. So of course they have to work harder than those private sectors. They have to work harder to survive in, company, in countries that have bad reputation. So economical diplomacy has a main factor for a government. Uh, so, um, so that means that to show to the world through their embassies, through their Ministry of Foreign Affairs, to, through their um, interactions between Ministry of Economy, Ministries of Finance, and Ministry of Education is important as well to show to the world why a country, why a nation should support the growth of the private sector. It, it's natural. So as yeah, I, you know, in my country, we, we, we produce copper. So it's very good. We have good prices is the source, for example. 
So uh, it's uh, part of the nation to, to not only show that we have very nice food and very nice gastronomy and come in to see our beaches and our tourism. It's not enough anymore. So we need the economical diplomacy needs to have a true strategy designed how we can place a nation and we can place as well the private sector of our nation uh, in international world or in even internally. Okay. So then we have the so-called corporate diplomacy, a bit the model that is uh, here that from the organization to outside. Means that the departments that in the past we had departments called communication department. We still have <laughs> another organization that have a business development department or sales department, okay? Or CEO um, special envoy, like this is for another friend of mine that is here, special envoy department, okay? So this is the, the, the departments that work linked and associated for the growth of, of, of the company. So, but sales, for example, uh, are not just to show you a product. You want my product, uh, you want to buy from me. It's not, it's not enough anymore. So uh, the department of corporate diplomacy is more essential than ever. Uh, now, of course, corporate diplomacy exists uh, as stakeholder management, uh, again, inside of the communication department or inside of the um, acting CEO or the, the leadership or inside of the business development depends on the companies. Uh, even if I believe that um, if the organization really wants to grow and become a multinational, for example, from a business point of view, um, needs to have a, a department that is solely dedicated to corporate diplomacy uh, because it's a reputation management. It's a reputation um, and a growth, reputation and development. So this is constantly be doing, okay? So, um, so, so it's, it's, it's that point. And then we have the so-called the commercial diplomacy that have, uh, uh, sometimes it's just a marriage of both, you know? At the end of the day, this equals, it's like a one plus one equals something. So economical diplomacy with the corporate diplomacy gives a whole commercial diplomacy um, and international diplomacy. What is the acting of that commercial diplomacy is actually to bear in mind, to bear in our mind, uh, the reputation. In our mind, the pillars of the sale, what we want to sell from our organization to something. We are selling education, are we selling copper, are we selling gold, are we selling petrol, are we selling, what are we selling? So to understand and to whom. So is it, uh, uh, go back to the basics actually, commercial diplomacy is to go back to the basics when the traders uh, 500 years ago cross oceans to sell. So what they did first is to know where they were going and to, to sell to the need, where the need was. But it's just not to present the product to the need. This is not enough anymore because the competitor is so big. There, we have so much competitors in China, in Russia, in Latin America, in Europe, and there's so much compliance, protection compliance about product, production in our own nations, to our own nation self-consumption, and to increase exports. That is the main role of economical diplomacy is to increase the exports. So if everyone is trying to increase the exports, who's going to import? You understand what I mean? We have to know, we're going to import where the needs are. So we need as well to know the needs to import, where the needs to import are. Where, so it's, we have all this, okay, I'm an economist, very nice, but we all have to understand a little bit the economical routing of, of the world for us to be able to, to, to create a realization of our, of our uh, ventures, of our results, of our business plans, of what we want to achieve. is really not enough just to push for a joint venture, just to push for a cooperation. No, we have to understand as well what, what, how the other ones see that cooperation. And it's so-called a diplomacy. And now you can ask me as well another question that I'm receiving. So, but how, can we be diplomats if we need to be aggressive in the market? Okay, this is a very good question. Actually, we can, we can be, uh, we can be aggressive. We can be aggressive sellers. We can be aggressive um, growth uh, addicts. You can say like that. We can be aggressive in the market. We can have as many clients as we can. We can push as much as we can, but that does not invalidate the capacity 
of the so-called commercial diplomacy. What means that? That we maintain our reputation, we work through the soft part of the commercials. That means the information. Commercial diplomacy is not more than information. Information compiled. So uh, I can say that five years ago, a lot of us, we are selling, we did a lot of market research. Ah, this is needed. So I'm going to sell to that market. So everything was about market research. Now it's not about market research. It's about trust. It's not about market research anymore because market research, we just call Deloitte and we pay and we have our market research done. We know exactly where our product is going to be fit, what our needs are done. But the, the markets are so fast now, it's so, so fast the change that the, the patient is so needed that what is more needed is the reputation that we bring in on the table. And so we cannot, we cannot fail. We can fail once, but you cannot fail twice, okay? Not anymore in this market. Actually, even to fail once, and it's a bit against, uh, um, against the American dream, actually, uh, that we can always fail and restart. Yes, in our lives, but sometimes not in the same line. So in these, we have to protect. We have to protect what we have to sell, what is our nation, for example, have to sell, or what is our organization have to sell. We have to protect it. We have to show we have what we have, but we have mainly to risk, to risk to go after different markets through the corporate diplomacy, through the commercial diplomacy, through the international part of the commercialization of our goods. That means reputation and network. But we have to be inserted in networks that actually value us. We should be inserted in networks that value what we have to sell to, and to match as well our own, our own people to match as well our own interests, to, ma to match as well the right people that we already did a pre-diligence before, because where we lose the time is to validate if the people are correct or not correct in the world. We won't work with the world, but we don't trust the world. So how can we do that? Of course, we have to belong. We have to belong, of course, to a network like, like you belong to us, um, uh, many of you. Uh, to ISPD or uh, you belong to other places that can validate already um, some of our suppliers or some of our uh, investors or whatever that are already inside. Um, you know, uh, this is another expression. We pay, like we say, we pay peanuts, we get monkeys. I always say that. Uh, so uh, so in, in the world. So sometimes it's about the price, but it's not always about the price. It's about um, the growth. And the growth uh, is about profitability. And profitability is as well uh, about uh, the balance between the quality and the price, okay? So at the end of the day, um, this is the international business that we live today. We are always trying to find better prices. We are always after the price. But nowadays, by a fact, after this COVID pandemic, we are not after the price. We are after the reputation. We are after the long-term partnerships again, like in the past. Uh, maybe two years ago, no, we are more, um, we are less faithful, okay? We are uh, buying from here a bit, buying from that, to try to do all these type of things. And it's completely normal because we could just put ourselves in a plane and just fly there and be their presence. The international business was a ticket price of a plane. Then came the COVID. So digital diplomacy became much more important. So how can you trust me if you never saw me? How that happened? How can you trust? So what is happening is that, yes, the interaction must still be face-to-face, -face. not necessarily. It's valuable face-to-face -face interaction, yes. We are human beings. The part of the international commercial diplomacy is that eventually, eventually, we all meet. We all find a way to all meet in one place, in one summit, in one, uh, in one uh, meeting room all together. We all that are here. Let's meet in Brussels. Let's meet uh, in Lisbon. Let's meet, uh, I don't know where. We can all meet. Is it, at the end of the day, past now to be a goal, but it's not a requirement. And this is not going to go back. 
this is not going to go bad in my perspective in the, in the in the professional analysis is not going to go back and when we are talking about climate change and are talking about uh, the macro numbers and the macro topics of the world um digital diplomacy now so that we are doing now is could be a meeting could be became more important the way we write our emails are 10 times more important than ever the ways that we misuse our whatsapp is more important than ever the way that you that you book our meetings face to face how we we give the value to the people it became more important than ever and that is the commercial diplomacy the international commercial diplomacy as well that takes the pillars we accept the sops the the, the models operandi of each and uh, and all we accept it sometimes are different pillar two we create the common ground that is linked to our different cultures to our different nations to our to our will of understanding our will of understanding so then we can accomplish the international business then we can go towards a successful growth or closing of a contract or whatever we want to do so this is now part of the essentials of the requirements it's part of the listening and it's part of of we uh, why we are here today so marcus uh, do you mind to 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 just uh, throw up <laughs> i'm still joking with you now uh, some of the extra questions that we may have received please okay uh, hello everyone um uh we have some questions that uh, we received at uh, the chat. Um, the first question, Dr. Pedis, is uh, from Derek, from Dick, sorry. Uh, how does commercial diplomacy help, help and promote trade and investment? Yes, it's a bit like what um, I just shared now, but uh, it's a very good question. Yes, of course, promotes because it's information. So a commercial diplomacy is a, a proactive step, a proactive step to go towards a goal. Okay, a proactive step. So, um, so of course, promotes trade in general because, for example, if um, you are um, working for a nation, so you you are no longer just knowing the macro level of your nation. Imagine another uh, another country because now I'm seeing now another friend of mine, uh, France. Is one of the the, the best um, international trade promoters because they really knew how to do it. So they meaning that they link the nation of France, for example, to the private sector. So uh, they did it very well, like Germany. Uh, there's not so so many countries, so but they did it. So you promote naturally. Why? Because you have a set of rules in the commercial diplomacy. So that means proactively you go to sell your nation and the private sector included. So you just take one goal. It's like it's like one shot to like, like I said to the like a football. You go to one shot only. When in the past uh, we only focus more in economical diplomacy, the embassies. Yes, my country is so nice. We have such a nice uh, pears and apples and. We, we have nice beaches, we have so, so nice tourism. It was a more generic approach of selling our nation. It's a, a true nation branding only. Now, with commercial diplomacy, you don't do that. You, what you do, for, for example, you, you know, to, to, to use, uh, to use uh, the same example, you, you see um, France, they sell the cheese camembert. Everyone knows that is a cheese from France. Nobody else sells that cheese. So it's cheese from France, it's France. France selling the cheese. Cheese camembert is a cheese from France. Point, there's not another option. And actually, then you start to associate actually not even the name of the company. Ah, this cheese, a famous one from France. Camembert, ah, then this, this, this long, this long uh, bread, the French bread. Nobody says baguette. People say French bread all over the world, but everyone knows that it's baguette, for example. This is just an, an example. So how we can promote the trade when you don't disassociate the quality of a nation. When you talk about Japan, for you is like obsessive quality. Doesn't matter, it comes from Japan. And you say, ah, it comes from China. Ah, it's a bit different. Sorry, Virginia, <laughs> it's a bit different. We have to, uh, we have to justify more some, some nations. So commercial diplomacy, 
This is not just the five nations. Package nations with the private sector and can promote the companies. Actually, even com nations that, for example, are a bit in a low level of reputation, uh, if, for example, they have a very, very good or three or four very good private sector companies that the world knows, they should start the opposite. They should say, imagine, I have this big company that's, um, that is a very famous company that sells coffee, for example, East Timor. I live there, so I know by a fact the coffee of East Timor is a very good coffee. But who wants to buy from East Timor? You go to see the ratings. I mean, uh, it's scary. So why they should what they should do? They don't say they don't say ah, East Timor or it's uh, sell coffee. No, the coffee of East Timor, the coffee of East Timor, the coffee is the company. And then slowly that company is positioning as well uh, the nation in a good moment. So it's a, a, a internal. Uh, analysis in the in a corporate point of view but as well in the state point of view where we can we can respond who what comes first nowadays the private sector must support the government to sell the nation and the nation must support the private sector they have to go together they they cannot be dissociated uh, and Support does not mean the, the government does not own the companies. Does not, does not have to be all state owned. What I mean is that this must be um, a link, a path to actually share costs. Because if you have a very strong embassy with a good economical diplomacy department, that ambassador is now learning to become a more salesperson. This is fantastic for us. This is fantastic for the world because we have a state paid employee that now understands economics that can actually sell the, the, the country. So, and the companies of the country is a, is a partner of us. So this is already huge and the opposite. We have corporate diplomacy uh, departments of the, the, the world that can support uh, the nations as well. The Belgians as well are very good. When they all sell their, their um, cartoons, you know, and the chocolates is Belgium as well. So it actually is the support uh, of, of made in Belgium, all these made in, in or made in supports as well. The private is like the, the best in the world for doing the made in are the Italians, for example. They always put a little flag in the t-shirt, in the motorbikes, in the cars. They always put a little flag of Italy. Pasta is Italy. So everything, so it's examples of how the trade is supported. So we can, of course, support. And we can uh, increase reputation uh, from success cases. So what the state should be doing is to study all the success case studies of their uh, private sector of the nation, to, to brand it, to show this is all success cases of my nation, especially the countries that have lower reputation. And actually the companies should use a very high reputation company, country, sorry, to increase. For example, if it's a, it's a, a, a small company in Germany, they should put for sure made in Germany. I would put immediately made in Germany. Why? Because I'm a small company. I'm just starting. I don't know anything. I'm, I'm trying to find, to risk, to find my way. But I am a German company. So in the perception of the mind, it's quality already. So, uh, so we have to, to try to not uh, divorce ourselves from our, for the reputation of our, of our governments and vice versa. This is the moment of inclusion, especially now, especially now that we are all separated with the COVID, that we are so nationalistic, only in our homes, uh, fighting with our, our families in small apartments. People went crazy in, the, in this period. We have now the moment to, okay, let's take the good out of it. What is the good? We understood more about our own countries. We understood more about our own private limitations. We understood what we are not good at. Let's take all this learning, what we are not good to actually create and to duplicate. And this increase trade for sure. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have another interesting question from Adela. She says, uh, for better understanding, what are the differences between the commercial and the corporate diplomacy? Yes, this is, uh, maybe she was not when I, I have defined, um, uh, but so, uh, corporate diplomacy is the perspective of the organization, okay? Corporate diplomacy 
is the same. So commercial economical diplomacy or corporate diplomacy is the same, but economical diplomacy is a diplomacy towers business from a nation point of view, from an embassy point of view, from a minister of foreign affairs point of view, okay? A corporate diplomacy is how a corporate private sector uses the tools of diplomacy, of reputation, of networking, uh, of uh, relationships to the benefit of the business. And the commercial uh, diplomacy is all of it, all of it together, economical corporate diplomacy. So that means is an objective, that is the commercial objective using the same tool. So, so it's, um, it's, it's the macro level of, uh, of the diplomacy. So a commercial is interchange, could be the government selling, could be the private company. So corporates mm -hmm. more seen from a point of view of organization, private sector, economical diplomacy is seen for the point of view of the public sector and commercial diplomacy is the relationship uh, of both sides, okay? Okay, we have a few more questions here, but uh, I think we- time just um, yes. for, um, can you compile like one more interesting and so on? And then we can, of course, uh, join, yeah. One, one more, okay. Um, from uh, Carmen, beside of commercial activities, in your opinion, how the pandemic impacts on the international relations regarding of protocol and diplomacy? Um, and and also, sorry, um, is right that Corona mask makes lacks of cooperation among countries, especially in the east eastern countries. Okay, can you mind to repeat? I did not understand very well the question. Um, besides of commercial activities, in your opinion, how the pandemic impacts? on the international relations regarding of protocol and diplomacy. Okay, yes, uh, yes, impact you, uh, you Jaman. So uh, all, all official visits were canceled. <laughs> all official dinners and official lunches were canceled. Uh, nobody see anyone anymore. So, uh, so the, the, the protocol point of view, uh, I'm sorry to say like that, I'm, you know, the ones that know me, I, I can be very direct, was dead for a year, okay, dead. Uh, we, we uh, it was that uh, that the original of what is protocol that is a official visits between states and 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 the official protocol and and everything that was um, we were all surviving actually uh, the events industry died so the, the airlines you know how it happens uh, planes are being rotten now jet fuel is, uh, is uh, everyone needs it because we fly again so. Uh, the, the pandemic in, impacted, uh, I, I don't even like so, so, so much the word pandemic uh, because it was a fabricated word as well for all for the markets, you know, for all of us. Uh, but yes, this situation that we, we have lived all of us together, I, 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 I believe in two things. One, um, the, the face to face, we, we, we were uh, in the beginning, we were. Um, not, not happy, but we were like, oh, this is something different, something that we all together will bring us together, okay? And so we are kind of, uh, ah, it's a common disease, it's horrible, but it's at the same time something that we are all living together. Then everyone lost something, everyone. Or people lost family, or people lost jobs, or people lost businesses, or people lost events, or people lost something. There was a loss. And that loss created a kind of a type of the general sadness. But parallelly, everyone gained something. This happened as well. Everyone gained or a new skill or someone gained, uh, I cannot survive like I was surviving before. So now I have to do something different. So everyone uh, became a little bit more resourceful. And that's it's what gives me huge amount of hope. And I, I can tell you that is amazing what happened is how through that creation, there's a lot of good things that were happening as well. So even if there's bad things that happen, of course, is a fact, that happen very good things as well. So, um, so now what, what impacted positively is that a lot of people, they had to reinvent themselves. We became more resilient. So men became more women. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, <laughs> the, men, the men became a little bit stronger. 
uh, and the women reinforce the, their capacities of resistance. Uh, I always make these jokes. I'm so sorry for the for my friends that are present here. Uh, we have to because when I talk about pandemics, we have to relax the mood. Uh, so we all became in in some aspects we became a little bit better. I believe on that. Uh, and the people say all these kind of theories that I don't believe that so this cleans that people people died and so on. I, I don't believe on those theories. I believe that that was a fact that happened. That is happening, that we solved it the, the best we could. We have vaccines, we have all this. And now we have to reconstruct, not how we were two years ago, but where we are today. So we're going to maintain what we gained. We're going to accept that we lost. And uh, we're going to continue with our Zooms to, to spare a little bit of, 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 um, of uh, funds in, a, in, in investing in flights and so on. We are not going to put ourselves immediately in the plane when you want to meet someone first time for any business or for anything. And back to the protocol, now we'll start again. So that means official visits will start uh, with the masks, of course, uh, when then everyone has their vaccines. Um, I think the masks will stay because it's already proven the, vac the vaccines do not protect for the COVID. Anyone will going to get, get the COVID anytime. I, I, for example, I did not get, but if I get it to be as well normal, I mean, became, you're going to be part of the normality. The people that protect as well, not to catch it as, as well are not living. So we need as well to start uh, going out there. So this is, uh, this is a bit my, my opinion. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Dr. Pires. Uh, I think uh, we have no more time to ask, answer this question. So please go on. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. So, um, so for, for, for this is a bit of masterclass I wanted to, to share with you. Uh, I'm, I'm so happy to see here some of uh, the master students that, uh, that were together with ISPD. I, I'm really, you know, I'm, I, I'm really touched because I'm a very emotional person as well. Um, I tend to be, um, to be really, um, I'm someone that I, I, I feel happy easily, you know, I, I always, it's something I always search for, like the movie, uh, that in search of happiness, I, I'm that person, I'm, I'm not uh, searching anything else, so um, as well, I would like just to share with you, um, you know, uh, for, for you to know, so we have a lot of people that are here that are already our members, so we have, we are launching our masters again. So just to, to share with you. So we are launching our individual memberships as well with our, with our masters. Um, so we have a lot of uh, nice membership uh, that includes not only the, our original program that is 8,900 years, but we have now uh, until the 11th of, of, of November, we are registering everyone uh, for um, the price of uh, the membership of uh, 5,900. So everyone, is, um, is connecting with us, part, being part of us, is being part of our group of experts, is actually to access of our partners, as you know, already we have so many members here present. We have uh, this big network that connects us all together. So um, I would like to uh, invite the ones that are not part of the network actually to join us now. I think it's, um, we, we, we can be in all these line, live sessions online, former prime ministers, minister for foreign affairs, former pro protocol people, business people, we're going to have a lot of plans for 22. So if you would like to join us as well in our um, uh, members level, you can uh, register uh, for starting now in 22. And the ones that did not finalize the masters, please, this is now the moment. Uh, we, um, we have now the three pillars masters um, before it's a little bit different. So, so if you would like to, to join us until the 11th of November, please, uh, you can. You can have the Executive Master Certificate uh, for the ones that did not do yet, of course. Uh, the ones that already have our Masters, of course, you can always join us for everything you, you want. Uh, and as well, I would like to invite you, when we do our, um, our encounter in Brussels, um, that we plan, or in Madrid uh, next June, uh, 2022 um, uh, is going to be a bit like um, a memorandum that I would like to, to tell you now is like, let's try to meet all together again. 
let's try to, to, to have our, our summit. Let's to try to meet face to face again to deliver the diplomas of the masters of the students of uh, last year and the years before. And we're going to do it in, in, in Madrid. Uh, maybe you guys can join as well for one week with us to do, uh, to, for us to all see each other again. It's a, a little bit the plea that I want to do. If, um, and, uh, and of course, the ones that, uh, that will really asking me about the, the masters and sending me emails and sending a front office. Uh, we have these until now 11th of November. That is the Belgium day. <laughs> so um, that uh, is, um, we are closing the early birds now. Uh, because the masters, uh, we have um, um, uh, the incorporation of the master starts in March, March 2022. Okay, so everyone that would like to join us, please join us now. Uh, you have uh, our front office address, front office network.org. We have Alex there to respond as well to your emails. You have as well Marcus here, belongs as well to our team. Um, and as well, the network itself, um, we are really trying to support all our members in these new ventures, like, like I'm sharing with you, in the new ventures uh, of the, the good, the, the happiness of all of us, a lot of people lift uh, uh, things uh, and they don't have network or they lost the network uh, or they don't want, they cannot belong to the Chamber of Commerce of Japan, the Chamber of Commerce of France, the Chamber of Commerce of, uh, of uh, South Korea. So if you have to choose someone, choose to join us. Uh, for two, like I said, for all this, the two reasons. One reason is the pillar of education is what that defines us. So we can exchange ideas. You can learn something new. We can learn from different people. So I, my opinion is just mine, but there's so many other people that have so many things to share. Um, uh, but as well to actually enhance your own businesses, enhance your own uh, network, enhance your access to investment, enhance that to take advantage because our network already reached more than 110 countries by now. Actually, our plan, as uh, many of, of you that are, are in our network, our members present here know, our plan for 2020 was actually to reach 194. We could not accomplish uh, because, of course, of this COVID, because this is always about uh, traveling, is always about going, going out there. So, um, so we, we could not do it. So um, uh, that 194. So now this is my plan 22. So, uh, so I, I, we will make it, um, and with your help and uh, and your participation, and that um, we are all here together, and the new people and our members, um, and um, I would like really to to anything um, you need, uh, we are here for you. We, like I always say, uh, it, remember, uh, I'm like looking now at Heidi. I'm looking at Lisa. Yeah, it's it's the house of ISPD. We have a house. Our house calls the BDB, bringing down borders. So. Uh, our, our building there in Brussels. So it's not really, um, it's not a building, it's a house, you know? So it's our house, so uh, all of us. So uh, we, we, we can leave the house, but we can always come back to the house. The house is always for us and this is uh, forever, like we always say. So, uh, so uh, I'm so thankful to be present here. Like I said, the ones that did not finalize their masters, and I saw a couple of them that are a little bit lazy or not studying enough, I'm seeing already. So now is the moment. Uh, if, if you guys are just repeating, just contact the front office, you know that um, this is the offer for the whole masters, but for the, the ones that are repeating dissertations and so on. So just call us uh, because we are not going to have more the possibilities to repeat the dissertations from the rules of our, of our uh, university, part university as well. So uh, it's going to be one set and that's it. So if uh, they give us this COVID opportunity for the ones, the ones that finalize that are here as well. So it's, it's fantastic. Uh, so this is what I wanted to share with you. So I wanted to share the introduce myself, the ones that did not meet me before. I wanted to share the importance of commercial diplomacy now more than ever uh, in via digital diplomacy, but as well, uh, via Zooms and via face-to-face. -face. I, I wanted as well to invite you to register as a member of ISPD, the ones that are not yet members. And I would like actually to invite you then to that we put a kind of a goal that we all see each other again in Brussels or in Madrid around June 2022. Uh, so we can celebrate the delivery of the diplomas of, of uh, some of our, of our friends and where we can as well have a summit and where we're going to have as well an opportunity to 
to, to interchange and to and to uh, to be together again um, this post post COVID era, and uh, and um, and it's what I wanted to share with you. Uh, I wish I could stay here longer, um, uh, but I, uh, like I always make you know I'm not a big fan of uh, of Star Wars. I always say that, but it's the kind of the return of the Jedi. So uh, so it's. Um, um, so meaning I'm, I'm, I'm here, I'm here for you after all this COVID. Uh, like I said, we never stopped. We, we adapted, so we are more 100% online. We are, so we are, we are really, we really broke down the borders actually. It was what we were able to do uh, through those uh, social media. So through all these um, new technology, digital platforms. So um, I would like to, to uh, really invite you to, to continue uh, in our house, if it's our virtual house and if it is our physical house. Okay, so I wish you uh, all the best and please keep in touch. You have you have my email, never changed, and uh, you have uh, marks. We have front office. Any, anything, any doubts? Uh, please contact me anytime. And thank you for for some of my friends to be as well present here um, from the, um, the international business as well to be able to come. And, uh, and to, uh, and to uh, as well understand all about, uh, about our path in ISPD uh, and um, together. Thank you. Thank you, Ines.